Hello and welcome to this quick tip tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Bartek Skorupa and today I am going to show you some ways of sharpening our image. In this video I will be using the photograph, but of course the techniques presented here work as well on the 3D renders. Here we have the image of the eyes of a very wise guy. But it looks a little bit out of focus and it needs some sharpening. The most obvious, the easiest and, in my opinion, the least effective way of sharpening the image is to use the filter node. So let's add filter, filter, let's plug it here, change the filter type to sharpen and that's the result that we get. The only parameter that we can control here is the factor. Let's set it to something reasonable like 0.5 maybe. Let's mute this node. So this is before, let's hit M again to unmute this and this is after. Let's see what happens if we set this factor to something ridiculous, like 10. Definitely not the result that we are looking for. So let's tone it down to 0.7, let's say. Muted, before, unmuted, after. Okay, so let's try some other techniques. Photoshop users are probably familiar with the technique of using the high-pass filter to sharpen the image. Let me show you how we can do it in Photoshop. So here is our main layer, let's duplicate it by hitting Ctrl or Command J. And now I will apply the high-pass filter to the copy. Filter, other, high-pass filter. I can set the radius here. Let's confirm. And this image doesn't look very promising, but when we set the blending mode to linear light, we get much better result. The image is much sharper, but of course this effect is too strong, but we can easily lower the opacity of this layer. And this way we get something that looks much better. Let me disable this layer. So this is before, enable it again. And we have sharpened the image using the high pass filter. Okay, so is it possible to recreate the same result in Blender? Yes, it is, and I would like to show it to you right now. So let's get rid of this nasty sharpen filter, Control X, and the first thing that I will do will be to invert this image. So let me add color, invert, and let me plug it here. And now let's see what happens if we mix this inverted image with the original image using the factor of 0.5. So let me add the color mix node, plug it here, take the original image and plug it to the lower socket and set the factor to 0.5. And what we get here is the half gray color, 0.5 for each channel. To check the color I am holding Alt key and left click and here I can see the values of the colors. Okay, let's take those two nodes and move them a little bit away and see what happens if I plug the blur node here between this one and this one. Shift A, filter, blur. Let's leave the default Gaussian blur, plug it here and set those values to something, I don't know, maybe 15. And what we begin to see here looks pretty similar to what we saw in Photoshop after applying the high pass filter to the upper layer. So now we can take this result and mix it with the original image using the linear light blend type, exactly the same as in Photoshop. So let me add yet another color mix node, take the original image and plug it into the upper socket, take this one and plug it to the lower socket, change the blend type to linear light, and take a look at the result. And now we have the control over the amount of sharpening here through the factor of this node. Let's lower this to let's say 0.7. Let's mute this node to see the result before, unmute it, and this is after. Now we have greater level of control because we can control not only the factor of this, but we can also set another amount of blurriness Let's set it to 30, for example, but this seems much too high. And I think that in case of this image, the amount of 10 is reasonable. But in this case, we can make the factor of this node a little bit higher. Let's set it to 0.9 or maybe even to 1. Okay, but this technique requires several nodes. But what if I tell you 
that there is an easier way of achieving exactly the same result as this one. Let's leave this setup as is and now I will take the original image and this blur node and I will duplicate them and here I will create another setup. So here I have the original image and here I have the blurred version of it. If I now mix the two, let me add color mix node and plug the blurred version into the upper socket and the original into the lower socket, let's take a look at the result. Right now, of course, the image is exactly the same as the original because we used the simple mix blend type and the factor of 1. But let's see what happens if I set this factor to something higher than 1. Let's set it to, let's say, 2. Let's check what factor we used in this setup. I used the factor of 1, so the equivalent of this in this setup is 2. So this is the result of this simple setup. Let's take a look at this result. Well, as you can see, those results are exactly the same. Let me prove it by adding yet another color mix node. And this time I will change the blend type to difference. And let's plug this one into the upper socket this one into the lower one, take a look at it, and as you can see, all over the picture we have the pure black color, which means that there is no difference between this image and this image. Let's delete this node, and as you can see, the result of this setup can be recreated using just those three nodes, and we get exactly the same. So here we take the original image, blur it a little bit, invert, and then the result of this one is mixed with the original using the standard mix blend type with a factor of 0.5. Then we take the original image and mix it with this one using the linear light blend type. And the easier way of recreating exactly the same looks like this. I take the original image, blur it a little bit, and then mix the blurred version of it with the original and use the factor higher than 1. And now, just for fun, let me maybe change the colors of the eyes. I will try to mask it out. In fact, I have already created the masks. And here I have the mask for the left eye. I have another mask for the right eye. So let me now use them in Compositor. Shift A, Input mask, let's select one of those masks, let's duplicate it and select the other one. So this is one mask, this is the other one. Let me add them, converter math, plug it here and take this one and plug it here. Now it would be good to blur it a little bit, so filter blur, plug it here and set the amount to, I don't know, maybe five. Now, this is our result, so let me add color, hue, saturation, value, plug it here, and let's make the eyes blue, so let's change the hue. But right now I am operating on the whole image, but when I take this result and plug it here as the factor for this node, this is what I get. I have to adjust those masks, but this is not a problem. Let me maybe also take those ones, move them a little bit away and add filter delayed erode and set the distance to maybe two and increase the amount of blur. Maybe increase the value, but I would also like to decrease the saturation of it. And I could use this saturation slider and move it to the left, but there is also another way that I wanted to show you now so let's set this saturation back to 1. I will add converter RGB to black and white and plug it here. And I will mix this result with this one. So another mix node. Let's change the factor back to 1. Take this one and black and white one. Take a look at it. And now as the factor I can use this one. But this is now completely desaturated. So let me also add yet another math node, plug it here, change the blend type to multiply, and when I set this value to 1, it will become completely black and white, 
And when I set it to some lower value, like 0 0.2 maybe, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4, I get something much nicer. So as you can see here, for desaturating the image, I am using very similar technique as I used for sharpening. Okay, so just to sum up, the first way of recreating the high pass filter here in Blender is to take the original image, blur it a little bit, then invert and mix it with the original using the factor of 0 0.5. Then we take the original image and mix it with this result using the linear light blend type. And here, by controlling the factor of this node, we control the amount of sharpening. But this is not that easy method. So we have the easier one. We simply take the image and blur it. And then we mix the blurred result with the original one using the factor that is higher than one. And in case of this setup, I used very similar technique for setting the saturation. So I am mixing the colorful image with a black and white version of it. And by controlling the factor for mixing, I am controlling the amount of saturation. Okay, so that would be all from me in this episode. I hope you find those tips useful. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.